All right, here comes the last lesson of this VTM. In this lesson, Zach is going to be fine-tuning the animation on the alien, as well as taking care of the animation for the alien's fingers, and finally, making sure the alien actually grabs his gun when he goes to shoot. He's also going to be doing a little bit of cleaning up, and not that I'm being too picky, but he's going to be adjusting that elbow that's been driving me crazy as well. <laughs> so with that, Zach, I shall turn it over to you. All right, well, what Buzz is talking about is the right elbow over here on the side of our alien. I'll just kind of scrub through the timeline, and you guys will be able to see what's happening. Right about here, we get some really funny rotation going on with that elbow. So we need to go ahead and make a point to fix that. Yeah, it's just a little unnatural. It's kind of stuck out there really far. Exactly. Of course, again, I still give Zach a lot of credit. This is tough doing under pressure live without no practice time. Or any notice for that matter, but we won't get into all that. <laughs> yeah, agreed. We'll just kind of let it go. <clears throat> so tell us what you're going to do to go about fixing this. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is take the key at the very end here. It seems even here that his elbow is a little bit high, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this down and just replace the key. So it doesn't have to interpolate quite so high. Exactly. And what this just did, I mean, it also uh, adjusted the rotation of the wrist, but that's okay. We can compensate for that rather quickly. Just switch his wrist back up for now. Maybe turn it back out just a little bit. And now we can just kind of go through and see where our problem children are. It may be kind of hard to see in this view exactly where our poor rotations are, poor translations are for this elbow. So let's go into our F-curves window. Yeah, of course, anytime you're doing any real sort of animation, F-curves window plays a vital role in the whole process. Yes, all those real animators use the F-curves window a lot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, you've got to. I mean, this is just where you control your interpolation between your keyframes. Oh, absolutely. I wasn't making light of it, just having a little fun. I understand. <laughs> now fix that elbow. I'm fixing it. So uh, as we come in here, we notice we have some really crazy curves going on in here that are really showing us where our problems are. Some dramatic changes to the curves. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead, and this key right here seems to be one of the problem children, if you will. seems to have some really harsh rotation we don't need. So I'm going to delete the key itself and watch all of those disappear. And now I'll just kind of scrub back through. And what I'm doing is I'm watching where the elbow's going, and I'm watching the location on the curve as well. So maybe these two uh, curves are a little close. I'm sorry, these two keys are a little close together, probably a little bit on the redundant side. So what I'll do is I want to delete this key right here, and I'll scrub back through and kind of see what I've got. Already getting a lot better. Still a little bit too far out, but now I've got fewer keys to actually fix the problem. Yeah, but now he no longer has a broken shoulder. Exactly. So let me delete that extra key out there, and then what I'll do is I'll just use what I've already got to try to fix this animation. I'll jump back to this keyframe, and now I'll go ahead and translate this elbow back in just a little bit. Replace the key. And now I'm going to correct my hand, because, as you can see, my hand really isn't going onto the pistol anymore. So what I'll do is I'll go to the, uh, the last key left, where it's getting right on top of the pistol, and just move it around. And you got to forgive me, sometimes I get a little quiet when I get into my work. Zach, quiet? Never. It happens every now and then, I know. It's kind of scary, but... Okay, so now we'll go ahead and test this out. We'll watch his hand come back through. Still got some funny motion on that hand. It looks like it might be coming from this key right here, so just as an experiment, I'm going to see what happens if I delete this keyframe. All right, now we have a smoother motion, but his hand is actually going through his body. That's a little bit of a problem. So I know we just deleted that key out, which is fine. What we're going to do, though, is actually pull the hand out to where it's no longer penetrating the body and place a new key. 
looking very nice. So he come, now he comes right back in. And of course, grabs at the moment, for our viewers out there, you need to take into consideration that the fingers haven't been animated yet, really. So that's going to make it look a little funny still. Absolutely. And I notice as he's drawing his gun, or as he will be drawing his gun, his hand is maybe coming back in just a little bit too much. And I want to maybe bring that out just a little more than it is. So let's go ahead and place a key there just to kind of clean things up. Also, in regards to the elbow we've been working on already, right about here it's still kind of protruding out a bit farther than I would like. So let me see just what happens if I delete this key. A little bit of a smoother animation. Maybe pan around to get it from a different angle so we can see what's actually going on. I'm still not liking how far it's actually coming out, so what we're going to do is actually move the elbow. Maybe to right about there, and then we'll place a new key. Now let's see what that did, if that put any kind of weird rotations on the elbow. Don't pay too much attention to the control rig. It's better to just pay attention to how your actual model's reacting, so sometimes you might want to just switch to models only on your display. Absolutely. So his elbow comes back, reaches for the gun, and comes out. Very nice, very nice. So now we also might want to come back in, as we've done earlier, and just kind of fine-tune the hand and make sure that it's staying pretty much where we need it to stay. Remember, we don't need the control rig showing to animate. Because of the character controls window, we can actually select all of the effectors we need right over here. Exactly. So that's not too bad. I think we'll go ahead and go with that. Okay, looks good. All right. So there's a couple of the things we do kind of need to address before we start uh, finishing this up. Just a couple of things, some stuff I want you guys to keep in mind when you're doing character animation. Remember secondary animation. If you watch anybody do anything, if they're cooking a pancake or if they're chasing a cooking a pancake, it's just the first thing that came to mind. Maybe I'm craving pancakes. Sitting there watching television, it, do, it doesn't matter. Right. Anything. Uh, there's, there's uh, they're always going to be in some kind of motion. Always. I mean, they're uh, very seldom, if ever, are you going to see somebody stand perfectly still unless they're a corpse or something. Yeah, exactly. So. We just kind of need to look over our animation and just see what's not moving. Now, the arms themselves are doing a great job right here, but I'm looking at the head, and the head really draws a lot of attention on this particular model. And if you notice, it's perfectly stationary until he actually looks over to, to his uh, eventual target. So we need to kind of fix that. We're going to do that by adding some secondary animation. And one of the best ways that uh, I would do that in this particular case is, I mean, just kind of look at what he's actually doing. He's playing with his little wrist computer. He's punching buttons on it. So let's actually kind of have him track his finger a little bit so it kind of looks like he's following what he's doing. It makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and drop an initial key right here. And what I'll do is I'll just pretty much every time he pushes a button, I'll just rotate his head just a little bit and make him kind of watch his finger. This is actually a very simple step, and because of the keys that have been placed, he kind of does some of it automatically. Perhaps goes a little bit too far, right, yeah, right back in there he looks a little too far over. So we can just pull him back in a little bit, place another key. And as you can see, that makes all the difference in the world in making him look like he's actually alive. Very nice. All right, so the only other place I can think to add just a little bit of motion is his tummy, because it's kind of protruding there. It's it's kind of cute to look at, but you yeah. notice as he's moving there, it's uh, it's not actually yeah. The whole torso area is just completely it's stationary, completely frozen. So <clears throat> we do have the hips effector, which, as you can see, if I just grab, you know, it affects his entire body. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that, and we'll put just a little bit of animation on him right at the beginning. So. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and lay an initial key for its uh, starting location at the very beginning of our animation. And actually, if you note, know, that actually put a little bit of animation into the scene. 
Right about here, his hips begin to swivel a little bit. So what we're going to do is between the start position... The reason, just in case anybody out there lost track of why that put just a little bit of animation in the scene is because Zach's at the first keyframe for the hips swiveling when the alien actually lifts up the gun. Uh, but the first keyframe was actually placed further in time, so there was no keyframes prior. Exactly. So now that he's actually got the first keyframe placed all the way back there at frame zero, now there is something to interpret. We now have a complete curve, which goes from the beginning of the animation clear to the end. Exactly. But what I'm going to do is exaggerate the little motion we have just a little bit more. So right about here, he actually starts to rotate. So right in between these two keys, I'll just put just a touch of rotation. Not enough to where anybody's really going to notice, but just enough to where he has a little bit of motion there. So that he's not sitting perfectly still. All right, very nice. <clears throat> and with that, I think we're actually ready to do some hand poses. I agree. So I'm going to rewind back to the beginning of the animation. Our right hand starts off in this pointing pose. We'll go ahead and leave it there for starters, but we will place a key to begin our animation curve. Now right about here he's done punching on his keypad, so we'll jump back just a little bit and re-key so that he keeps his pointing throughout. And then maybe to right about here, we'll make him relax his hand. So what I'm going to do is with my pose mirrored, body part selected, I'm going to double click on the hand half open pose, which is going to paste that pose onto uh, the specified effector. And yep. his hand relaxes. you got to love them poses. We talked about them in VTM issue number two, just in case anybody happened to miss that one. <laughs> So now we've got a little bit of rotation problem with the fingers actually coming up through the hand. I'm not going to stress over that too much. If this were a real major animation project, I'd be going in there and fine-tuning each and every single knuckle. In this case, I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's just being caused probably by a little bit of overshoot with the auto-interpolation. Absolutely. So I'm not going to stress over that too much. Once again, it's one of those little things you can go in there and just kind of dig out. But right about here, he needs to go ahead and grab his gun. So I'm going to back up just a little bit and re-key this pose so that he holds this pose throughout. He reaches back around here to his gun. Now right about the frame that I want him to pick up his gun. We'll say right about here. Now this is going to be one of those times where it's going to be a fairly decent idea to actually have a set key, like a key that you write down that you know at this point I want him to pick up his gun. Exact frame time. Right, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and select snap on frames, and we'll say at exactly frame 131 we want him to pick up his gun. So at frame 131 his hand needs to be closed. So now we'll go to our hand closed pose paste it onto the model, and set a key. So we watch his hand, we pan around so we can see a little better. He goes from pointing to relaxed, and then reaches back and grabs for the gun. Alright. So now what I want to do is go ahead and we'll get the other hand in before we make the pistol actually come with the motion, and then we'll be pretty much wrapped up. Yep. So I'm going to come over here to the left hand, and you know, having his hand all nice and taut like that, it's okay, it's not terrible, but I would like to think he's not going to be you know, using that hand too much, so maybe it just needs to be a little more relaxed. So what I'm going to do is deselect mirror, and I'm just going to paste the hand half open pose onto that hand. And then just as a test, let me go ahead and play throughout, because there is no animation on that hand. 
in this case, that's actually going to do just fine. Yeah, that's good enough. Of course, if this was for you know a, a real project other than just a training video, you may want to take a little bit of time to, you know, the fingers relax. Maybe they start to open a little as his hand comes down. Well, also in a real major an animation, you're going to be using custom poses that you've already built. You're going to be using poses also just as guidelines and come in and fine tune each exactly. rotation you're of the pulling, finger. You're pulling these off with defaults that are given to us on the clip art CD. Absolutely. So uh, with our own custom model, isn't that great? <laughs> so what we've got here is pretty good Now let's go ahead and do the exciting part Where he actually picks up the pistol And this is where you need to really be careful And think about what's going on So that you don't accidentally go in there And cause the gun to shift or snap Right, the whole idea of adjusting weights And snapping your your constraints Is so that your character can interact with an object Without the object moving beforehand you don't want an object, like in this case the pistol, to magically move from the holster into his hand. Right. And this is where that offset that you guys saw earlier is going to become a very important key part of this animation. I'm talking about the offset that we've talked about in several lessons throughout the Constraints VTM. Exactly. So let's come in here and just kind of have a look at what we've got. This hand kind of comes in here. Grabs for the pistol at frame 131. So and how about at 130, we want to do some keyframing on the weight, perhaps? Absolutely. So we're going to shift back to frame 130. And we'll actually select our constraint. And just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and lock this. And I'm going to set a key on the weight to this constraint. Now, you can't do this over here in the key controls. You have to do this in, uh, in this constraint's own little key menu. We'll go ahead and place a key. This turns blue. The animation button depresses to let you know that you just uh, started some animation. But now what I'm going to do is at frame 131, where he's actually going to be picking up this gun, we're going to re-snap the offset on this gun. That's right. And then we're going to take the weight up to 100%. And, key. and you'll notice that when he slid the weight up to 100%, the gun did not move. If he would not have resnapped with the new offset, the gun would have then slid, perhaps just a little bit, but it would have still slid. Exactly. So now we can go ahead and test this out by backing up, watching his hand come in, grabs the gun. Beautiful. And it's out there. So And I'm not going to push you, Zach, to, to get the fingers all perfect for, you know, as the fingers open and then close around the actual handle of the gun. There's no reason for that. I think this does a... Once again, we're using default poses. Yeah. This and in a big production, we'd be making our own custom absolutely. poses for this. This does an excellent job of, of showing exactly what I want you to show. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and rewind real quick, and we'll scrub back through this one last time just to show everybody what we got. Go ahead and get the antenna in there, because the antenna is still wobbling. You got it. Along with the mic boom. The mic boom. And I'm actually running out of mouse pad space here. Sorry about that, everybody. So he sees his target, grabs for his gun, and draws his gun. Very nice. So between the last lesson and this lesson, Zach has given everybody a good overview of how to go about actually animating a character that's interacting with an object in Motion Builder. All right. And with that, that's going to wrap up VTM number three for Motion Builder, with this VTM's primary focus being on constraints. And if you remember, we talked about the three different types of constraints. We had simple constraints, we had expression constraints, and we had relations constraints. And so with that, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us, and that's going to conclude this VTM and lesson. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.